All right, buddy. So what's your name and where are you from? My name's Jeremy. I go by Burner. I'm from Utah, Ogden, to be exact. Ogden, Utah. Actually, I did a story on something that just went down out there. I think it was in a jail or something. But uh, uh, Ogden, Utah, and you said Jeremy, correct? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have an interesting story coming your way today. And, of course, like you say, he's from Utah. Uh, you are part of an organization. We're going to get there. Uh, you decided to leave that organization. You left in prison? No, I got out, and I just quit messing with him, though. Okay, okay. We're going to talk about that. Uh, how he kind of left this uh, lifestyle behind. But first, man, you're on lockdown 23 and 1. You got a YouTube channel as well. We'll talk about that. I forgot to mention that. Uh, but tell me, how the hell did your journey begin towards the life of crime, face tattoos and everything? <laughs> well, ever, let me get into it, man. So, like, ever since I was a little kid, I've always been, like, just wild. Uh, I grew up pretty normally. But I just started getting in trouble, and I started getting locked up when I was like 12, 13. I go to group home, I'd run from it. I go to another group home, I'd run from that one. Well, how was your parenting another... life? I hate to stop you. It, was the parents, parents pretty good were, or what? So my mom, and my dad are divorced, but like my mom, and my stepdad, my stepdad's actually a cop. So like me and him like never got along. Me growing up, does that make sense? Like he turned uh, yeah. into a cop when like. My mom married him and then he became a cop. So I was just like, whatever. So I went and lived with my dad. My dad was like into drugs and all that, you know. He's clean now and I'm proud of him. But like me and him grew up just hood, bro. Like we didn't have no money, like anything, bro. And we both were just like bad drug addicts. And I just got in hell of trouble and spent my entire juvenile locked up. Like I've never been to seventh, eighth, ninth grade. None of that, bro. I don't know how any of that feels, bro. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Uh do you feel as though if your dad was living the straight and narrow, things would have turned out a little differently for you? Absolutely, because I looked up to my dad a lot. But my dad's living the straight and narrow right now, and I'm about to have a kid in two days, so I'm doing my thing, and my dad's there for me, so we kind of rise above it all, you know? Y'all both kind of changing it up together around the same time, you know? Well, yeah. I don't know about the same time, but y'all both definitely take, taking different routes now. Uh, Absolutely. That's cool, man. All right, so I like to hear a little bit about how people get going. And, you know, because some people like me, I had great parents. Shit, they were just the normal old square parents you could possibly imagine. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> and I still went astray. So it, it just it just varies. You know, it's not always people with uh, parents that are addicted to drugs and stuff. It can go either way. But, uh, yeah, okay, that. so you're in, uh, in and out of, you say, group homes? Yep. Okay, you ran so you, said, you ran away from a group home, you said? Oh, so many times. They yeah. put me in like three different group homes, and I was like, dude, I'm not feeling this. Yeah. And I just left. Where'd you go, then, man? I mean, a kid, pretty much. Where, where are you uh, going? I would just, so I would have nowhere to go. So, like, you know, I have like those one, two, the one, two, three friends, you know, that are there for me and stuff. So, yeah. I'd, I'd always end up just going to their house. I'd just end up getting high and be on the run for like three weeks, and that's about it. Sleeping man. on that couch in the garage. Yeah, and then their moms would get sick of me, <laughs> kick me out, you know. Hey, bro, he goes, been here. He been staying that little too long, man. You know. Yeah, I feel, I, I feel that. She's like, you either need to pitch in or do something, and I'm yeah. like, I don't know what to tell you, you know. All right, well, uh, I mean, you obviously got into the gang life later on down the road somewhere, somehow. How did that manage to happen? Was it in in the pen? What was it? All right, so like I said. I grew up with a certain organization ever since I was a little kid. I went to prison, and uh, when I got there, uh, the white boys tried to come at me like, you're yeah. white, and... I hate to pause you. I hate to pause it, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize to stop his story, but we got to get this out in the open first and foremost. Okay, excuse me. Uh, you were a part of a Spanish gang, correct? Or whatever, yes, you, whatever you like to call it. And... You're, are you Spanish in any way, or are you just, are you white? You uh, look bro, white, man, you know, I'm just I, saying. I'm your all-American white boy, bro. I'm just, I'm Scottish. That's what my family is, you know. You're a part of the Spanish gang as a white dude in Utah. How does Utah run when it comes to, well, before we get into the what we were talking about, how does it run with the politics with, oh man, you know, race? <sighs> is it anything like the West Coast, or what? Is I, it? I put it this way. The biggest Crip gang are white boys 
All right, there's two separate gangs, okay? I don't really want to speak on exactly the names, but there's two separate gangs that kind of do their thing. But when I got there, they approached me like, what's up, man? You're white. This is what it is. And I, I didn't grow up like that, you know? I was like, dude, like, I'm not racist, so I'm not going to be part of that. And so, like, my first two weeks oh, in so prison, I was... So you had some, some white dudes come up to you trying to, well, like some uh, Aryan kind of guys or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And so I was like, yeah, man, I'm not racist. Like, I'm not going to, like, pretend to be somebody I'm not. And for my first two weeks in prison, I, I had to throw hands with a lot of people because they're sending people at me every day to try to, like, run me out of the section. But after a while, I gained my respect, bro, and I stayed there, and they just kind of let me do me. Okay, slow it down. Slow it down. Back it up. Okay. You're, you're in. Okay, you go to uh, – what you go to prison for? I went there for a burglary and an escape and uh like a failure to stop at command of a law enforcement officer okay and you weren't gang banging at all during this time no it Not didn't happen until you got to prison yeah okay so uh you get to this prison what's the prison called by the way was it a you high level i'm prison. guessing burglary you probably in like a uh, maybe medium low no out the, out here we have two prisons so we don't have high low we don't have none of that so like we just have the main prison and then they're like within that prison there's max super max so it just depends like from there but if i go there on a burglary they're just going to send me to general pop hold on so there's only two prisons in the whole state yeah that's it only two prisons in the whole one's, state one's not even a prison one's a correctional facility it's called gunnison correctional facility hold on so utah look i don't know my maps very well ladies and gentlemen i do apologize <laughs> but look, was Utah like nothing? Is it like a desert state? Yeah, it's a desert state. It's just nothing but desert for real. Cause one That's prison, it. there can't be too many people there. Oh, so I, I've heard Draper holds around five thousand, and Gunnison holds about eighteen hundred. Okay, so five thousand is quite a bit for a prison. That's a pretty big, big prison. So, I mean, they don't separate the inmates by violence and stuff like that in any way in the prison. No, hell no. Hey, my first when I fished in. My first celly I ever lived with was there because he cut his he cut his neighbor's head off, bro. Like we we were like talking about why we're in prison and that was his charge. And I'm just there on a burglary, you know? So I'm like So what? they put everyone together in this one prison, no matter what the charge is, how long you're doing time. Yeah, pretty much. What? It's crazy. Hold on, man. man. This is this is like the craziest shit I've heard in a while because I thought I knew you know, just about everything there is about prisons in all these states, man. Nah, but Utah, man. yeah, it's fresh. This is, I ne I didn't even know there was a state that only had like two prisons in it. You know, uh, let alone houses everyone together. They, man, they gotta have some kind of separation in the prisons to some extent, man. There ain't nothing. Uh, so they have this thing called A and B Day, right? Uh huh. And so there was so much gang violence. Because everyone can just kind of like run wild. And so there was so much violence that like they put the like the southerners and the northerners on different sides. And they're like, you guys come out on an A day. You guys come out on a B day. So they weren't allowed to live around each other. Like they never got around each other. Does that make any sense at all? So yeah. So they pretty much just like separated that. the major gang. Yeah, pretty there. much. And, and everyone everybody else, else just runs wild. Just kind of flows in between those two uh groups absolutely that's crazy um well how is it when it comes to you know like the white boys run, running up on you you get the, the aryan kind of guys do they yeah. mingle with black dudes or uh, uh anyone, you know i it just depends man it depends what like kind of caliber of an individual they are within their gang you know like if they really believe that they won't mess with black okay people. well let me put it better like this is it set up to where each race has like their own phone in some places no, okay not it's not all. like that okay okay no. uh all right so now you're getting into prison let's get into the prison scene now we know the demographics the politics of the yeah. prison you're walking into and there's only two prisons it's crazy to me man you go into prison. You're not affiliated with nothing. You had options. Since I'm guessing yeah. the variety of people and who can mingle, who can chit-chat together, it ain't as strict as some 
uh, states that have these organizations in it, but you had options. What made you take yeah. the option that you took? Well, we're not, we're not going to, you know, you know, I got a story behind it. Okay. Let's hear, hear it. Let's hear it, man. Okay, <clears throat> so let's just not tag no I, names to it or not. You know, I, I feel that. I feel that. So <laughs> I originally went to prison on an 18 month sentence, right? 18 months. 18 month termination. Okay. okay. I ended up, they gave me a termination my first time down. I ended up turning that 18 years into eight or 18 months into eight years. I did eight years straight. Right. So within that eight years, about three so, years into it. So you okay? gained about seven years. Yes. From I caught behind three, bars. So I caught one assault. I caught another assault on a prisoner and I caught a, a gang related stabbing. Damn, dog. You tricked your chime up like that. Yeah, bro. Did you think you were going to get time like that? No, not really. Well, I kind of ended up not caring. So That's what I was about to say. You had to have not cared. Yeah, I just was like... So, this is what happened. I went to Max because I got into a fight. Okay? They throw you in Max. And I was sitting there, and I was a tray server, and my homie was a tray server. Well, the homie I was living with ended up being from the organization I ended up being a part of, if that makes any sense, okay? But this was before I, I gangbang. We were just living with each other. Yeah. Well, the white boys got into a beef with them, bro, and they tried to slice me through the cup port because I was living with one of them. And so in my head, I'm like, if you're going to get me for them, I might as well just end up being a part of them. You, you feel me on that? Yeah. Yeah, and I was just like, it I is mean, you're, it is, is your celly and shit kicking it with you and like, hey, kind of support. Yeah, you know how it is. You're riding with your celly, like hands down. Like if these doors pop, you are. I, got I mean, is back, he bro. like kind of preaching to you in a sense to kind of come that way, uh, or what? Not really, bro. Or like, were I you? Appro- I approached him. Yeah, I was about to say, were you like, hey, man, what's up? You know, you know how it is. I was getting all tatted down and tatted my face, and I just didn't care anymore, bro. I was like, whatever, like. If I spend the rest of my life in prison, I'm going to make a name for myself. I'm going to be me. Like, they're going to know who Burner is, you know? Like, that's how I feel, you know? That's crazy, man. All right, so you this is another thing I wanted to ask you. When you said you got transferred to the max, what's the difference between the max part of that prison and the regular GP, so I pop, guess? So, Pop, you're out, like, from 6 in the morning to, like, 9.30 at night, I think. And then they just like rack you in for like lunch or whatever. Cells and, or 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 dorm. Yeah, you, you're you're in cells. Okay. Uh, G- Gunnison, the other prison has dorms. That's but, probably like, like that's more, really low, yeah. low, low. Well, that's like the programming area, if yeah. that makes sense, because they have like drug programs and all that. Yeah. And so, I was in max, and that means I come out every. If you're on quads, they just barely started that. But when I went to max, it was single cell. You come uh, every twenty twenty three and one, bro. You already know. Yeah. And, is the uh, block a little different, smaller? No, it's so there's tw- or there's eight cells downstairs, eight cells upstairs, and there's two people a cell. So you're what is that? Thirty two people in the section. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's I don't know. I don't. Every- I'm not good at mathematics. And it, yeah, everybody gets a uh, <laughs> everybody gets an hour out. Yeah, and that's just how it was. And I I did I ended up doing six and a half out of my eight years in max. Damn man. Yeah. Was it because of all the what we're gonna talk about? Uh, that and just like, well, it just depends. So like if you're in max and you get in trouble, they try to, they have tiers. So they have like single cells and then you come out with like another cell, if that makes sense. So two cells and then you're thrown on quads and like, you got to work your way up. Okay. But if you get into any funk within any of that, like year or whatever, you get kicked back get, down to single yeah, cell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I've heard this, uh, procedure before, um, step down. Step down is what I heard from other places. Yeah, step down. Uh, yeah, step down program. Uh, all right, so you're you're in this max. Well, first yeah. off, you say you got in a fight. You got in a fight, right? Yeah. Okay, t- go back into that. So, so you're uh, getting you know getting interested in what homeboys rocking with and and yeah. what after that. After that, I just told him, uh, hey, like, put me on, bro. Like, it's time. Like, I'm ready to, like, I, I just thought that was the right decision for me. And that's what I did. I got put on and everyone accepted me. And then I became me, you know. I mean, uh, so not knowing Spanish, none of that stuff. No, I was Man. the only white boy in the section. Oh, okay. So you didn't see any other white guys 
rocking well, with well, that, there were, with that there team. Other, there were other, there were other white boys, but like they, uh, they were in different sections and like, you know what I mean? But in yeah. that specific section, it was just me, bro. Okay. And no one really had a problem with it. No. Okay. Like, so, all right. That's just crazy. <laughs> all right. So, I mean, do you feel as though that you looking, looking back, that they were kind of using you, or do you think it was, you know, they really nah, rocked so, with you? No, nah, I actually kind of uh, became somebody within that organization, bro. All right, let's hear it, man. Well, so the dude I got put on by was the dude that is called Shots, bro, you know? So I figured if I'm going to get put on, I'm going to get put on by the dude, you know? Yeah. And, uh, just because I got put on by him, because he don't put on too many people, I got instant respect. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. And then I just I learned, like, uh, like they have, like, bonds and formats and all the, you know, education. I learned all that. And uh, I ended up knowing a lot more than 90% of these other dudes that are Hispanic, you, you know? Yeah. And so it got to a point where everyone was kind of in their feelings, but I still did me, and I was still respected, you know? Yeah, I mean... You got put on by a head honcho, right? So how'd yeah. you get in his good graces? I mean, they just—they literally just threw me in his cell. Like they—they're like, you're going to Max, and that's where I ended up. Like, oh, so he was. Th oh, that's your celly. Oh, so that was your yeah. celly. Oh, the yeah. head honcho was your celly. Okay. Yeah. Uh yeah, I—I I can understand that. And people got no other choice really to be but to fall yeah. in line. I mean, that's. That's a boss man, you know. You know. Yeah, that's boss man, bro. What, what are but they gonna the do? They ain't though, gonna go against up, that. You know? I grew up with his son, and I grew up with, like, I know his family. I know, you know what I mean? So it wasn't just like they threw me in that cell and I didn't know him. Like, I, I knew his whole family. I know, like, just from growing up in Ogden, where I'm from, you know? Oh, so you knew. Did you pick where you were going, or did it, was it no, just random? No, they threw me in, and I was like, oh, that's – I'm like, what's up, man? I heard a lot about you. Because as soon as I – like, they're tell, like they're like, your cell is going to be this guy, and I know him. I know of him, you know? So as soon as they put me in, I'm like, hey, I know your son, like – I know your brother, and he's like, "Oh, what's up, bro?" You know, and he's like, "You bang," right. and I'm like, "Nah, man." And then it just ended up he put me on, bro. After that, they tried okay. to slice me, you know. So crazy how it turns out, man. I mean, it's yeah. when you look at it like that, that's even more along the lines of like, "Hey, it was supposed to be a part of your story." Like, where are the odds of yeah, this head right. honcho of this organization fake, being in the cell with you and Max Lockup that you just so happen to have grown up with his son? Yeah, his son, I know his brother, I know his mom. Like, I've been to his mom's house before. I mean, that's just like destiny, bro. Yeah, that's know? crazy, yeah. So, yeah, man. That right there, I would have taken, you know, looking back, I'd be like, man, I was destined for some, something great, you know, for it to yeah. fall in the line like that. But And instantly, he's like, damn, you know my mom, my brother, like, you know, my, you know, so he's like started tripping. Yeah, I it gets a little personal him. then, you know. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, man, actually, this is kind of cool, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of like brought him because he's doing years, you know, so it kind of brought him like home for a minute. Like, whoa, yeah, man, this dude knows my brother and my mom. Like, how's she doing? I haven't seen her in a minute, you know, like, yeah, I've I've, I've had some experiences like that where some uh, older dudes came through that knew my brother. So, yeah, I've, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, all right. So y'all are in Max. How long are you in there? What happened? I'm sure you got tricked up somehow. You kept tricking up back there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Man, we just kept getting in trouble. So policy, like people from the organization I was from, they don't get high. They don't do like none of that crazy stuff. So we would just, every day we would work out. I worked out three times a day. I'd get up in the morning because you got to wake up with your mattress rolled up by 545 with your shoes on because the first wreck comes out at six. And there was a cop that was known for popping doors and stuff. So there's a lot of people that were getting stabbed and stuck up in their sleep. So people, we were ready, dog. We were ready to. It, it was so crazy. let me let me explain for anybody that might not understand what popping doors means. It means uh, a guard will open up a door to certain people, inmates, to let them get attacked, stabbed, or whatever the case. Correct. Yep. Uh, they even bet on it, bro. Yeah, I've heard stories of them popping doors on inmates just for what you're saying, bets, entertainment, uh, just to see two different organizations go at it, whatever the case is. Uh, all right, so you're back there. They're popping doors and shit. You're getting into the mix. I mean, what was the first thing that really, really jumped off? Man, so that whole white boy situation was crazy. Like, there was people like 
popping cup ports and trying to like get people in their sleep. Like it just got wild. And like, it even got to the point where like we were blowing each other's power. So the other tier couldn't watch TV or heat up water. And then as soon as they'd get their power on, they'd blow ours. And then we couldn't heat up water because they were throwing like hot water and oil on us through the water. You know what I mean? So we had popped their power so they couldn't like heat up water and dude, it got hectic, man. And this was with the white dudes. Yep. And, uh, I mean, who did the COs favor? You said they were popping doors. Man, so they guess... always favor the white dudes all the time, man. You it seems know. like that, don't it? It seems like that, don't it? You yeah, know? all the time. <laughs> it's because they're all undercover racists, you know? Hey. And especially, like, I live in the desert, so it's like we're all hillbillies out here, bro, you know? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, guards are yeah. against you, you know? You got the white dudes battling with you. I mean, how were y'all blowing out the sockets? Were you just – uh? Man, how are y'all do doing it? Yeah, we were just putting two big ass pieces of like wire in it, and then just setting a piece <laughs> of wire on top of it and just blowing it, bro. And then you'd hear them; they'd be like, they would just say, "Hey, this, this is a true story. The first time we ever blew their power, it was on the Super Bowl Sunday, bro. Oh my god! And so the people that did have their TVs was devastated." devastated oh, man so can you just picture a bunch of angry inmates and max with no super bowl sunday holy shit dude yeah that's that's craziness that's that'd be craziness <laughs> um that's that mental warfare right there yeah so you say you did six and a half uh nice. on max man i mean what kept you back there i'm guessing something kept you back there longer than most you say you got caught some charges what was the yeah. first thing that made you catch some charge? Well, yeah. What was so, the first, right, my, first, my first, my first assault? My first assault was before I gangbang. They sent me, so I did eight. They tried to send me to a county jail for like my last two months because they do like this thing called an IPP, which uh -huh. is an inmate placement programming. So they'll yeah. send you to like county jails, and uh, they tried to send me to Ogden, where I'm from. And then when I got out, they're just gonna let me walk out and terminate. Well, I went to that county jail and I ended up beating up this dude that because this dude told me he was going to stab me because I was like, a, I cleaned the sections and stuff. It was my job. Uh -huh. And I went up to him and I was like, look, man, I was like, I'm not your mom, you know. So like next time you make a mess in there, like I want you to clean it up. And because he like threw a bunch of stuff in the shower and he was like, when the doors pop tomorrow, I'm going to stab you. Like just start running his neck. And I was like, all right, bet, bro. I was like, that's the buzzer. 545. And so I, I didn't even go to sleep. I just stayed up all night. And as soon as the doors popped, I ran down there and just waxed them, dog. Yeah. And I got I got in a lot of trouble for it. I mean, did you wax them to the point where it was overboard? Yeah, yeah, it was overboard. It was pretty bad, bro. I ended up breaking his whole eye socket. And I put him to sleep. And he was choking on his own blood, bro. And he, like, threw up blood everywhere. And I had to play. I had to pay $20,000 for plastic surgery. Damn. That's crazy, rough. though. That's crazy. Okay, so how'd you catch him slipping? So, like, he, I knew that he wasn't about it. Like, he wasn't a gangster or anything. But, like, bro, I went down there, and, like, when I, he had the covers over his head, and, like, I come running in the cell, and he, like, looks at me, and he throws the covers back over his head. And oh, I was like, what? Shit. And I just took off on him, bro. I just, like, just started. Like, I literally mounted him. I got on top of him, and, like, I had my back against the top bunk, and he couldn't move, bro, and I was just bombing on him dog. oh damn you had that top bunk mount pushback yeah, on bro. him Yo, that yeah, push, that push that's that pushback counterweight yeah hell yeah <laughs> i bet that hey, top gotta... bunkie was like you know kept raising yeah. up <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey hey you know what's funny though is after the fact his his bunkie was his dude and this dude was in there on like a traffic violation and so, like, he was, like, hiding on his bunk, and he's like, man, can I just leave? And I'm like, dude, get the fuck out of here, you know? That's crazy, man. Okay, uh, I can't believe he put his head back under the covers. That's, that's crazy, man. That's I mean, he, he, so I guess he just didn't think you were going to remember. You yeah, know, that's, he ain't just going to tell me you're going to stab me. He can't, me and then, he like, can't man. And then when someone says the cell, when the cell doors pop, you got to take that seriously, man. You know, I've, I've done told stories yeah. about that. I've seen people... Just like that guy you're talking about, they weren't ready when they, you know, they should have been. They thought it was a game. All right, so how long into your bid did all this violence start happening? I mean, were you tested at all when you first got there? or? Dude, my first two weeks in prison, they literally sent every time I would, like, as soon as the doors would pop in the morning, they'd send a probate at me. And it's usually, like, some, like, skinny white kid trying to prove himself, and he'd just get beat up. 
and then they'd kind of just laugh at him. But <laughs> oh, it's crazy. But I'm a bigger guy. Like ever since I was a kid, I've been six. I'm six two right now, two hundred pounds. So like, I've always been the same kind of size. So. Damn, bro, I'd be interviewing giants. So that was in GP, correct? Yeah. Okay, and then they sent you to the max. How long into the max was it where you got that eye socket being crushed charge? Oh, no, no, no. So they sent – I was in general pop when I caught that charge. That charge was oh, in general Oh, so pop. this is before you met Big Homie. Yeah, this is before. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that's what sent you to max. Yeah. Okay. And was that a white dude doing it? Was it, was it one of those – probate kind of guys or was it just uh some regular oh that was just some average like average joe white dude that was in jail that just had a mouth on him bro okay hey that reminds me and like uh is there any place for you know like in some states they call them others is there any place like that for the people that don't gang bang or anything Yeah, absolutely if you go there and you don't want to affiliate with no one no one will mess with you you'll do time in prison you'll get out man yeah you think that's the best route for people to take absolutely all right so you're in the max what what happened in there did you, you kept on getting in some shit right you couldn't get out of there yeah i just kept getting in trouble like a lot of my shit write-ups for having like stingers or write-ups for having tattoo guns or ink or any kind of paraphernalia like that and once you get any kind of write-up they shoot you right back down to level one you know so it's just like it's an endless pit unless you just want to sit on your bunk and not do anything all right man well ladies and gentlemen uh, the the story kind of takes a turn. Uh, you come out of prison and you leave the organization. I mean, is there something, you know, that happens in prison or after prison that, you know, made you say you want to take a different route? Uh, so, no, what happened is I ended up catching a gang-related stabbing. And uh, we'll get into this probably in another episode if you want to do one. But, like, I, I caught a stabbing and I caught a fight to life, which is a – minimum five years life sentence tops right and i pled it down to a zero to five and they gave me four more years on it so after i got out with those the dude one of the dudes in the organization told on me if that makes any sense and i don't really want to speak about it right here because it's past and it's you know i just want to drop it but he ended up telling on me and after that i just did my time and i got out and i was like i'm good man like i'm just gonna be a man i'm gonna grow up i'm gonna get a job like I, I don't care about hustling anymore. I don't care about gang banging. Like, I just want to be normal again, man. Because that place messed me up. It messed me up like that, man. And I just, I ended up choosing to grow up. Well, you know, it doesn't help that someone that's supposed to be there, you know, ride or die type of individual, yeah. you know, and tell them. You, you, you learn all these bonds and all this stuff that they're preaching to you, like life or death. And it's like, dude, you just told on me. Like, what you mean? Like, just because you got rank don't mean that you can tell on me. And then just, like, try to sweep it under the carpet. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, we were supposed to be homies, bro. Like, I, I would have killed someone for you, dog. Did you try to explain that to anybody? Yeah, they didn't care, man. Because the dude that told on me was one of the higher-ups, bro. And so, like, all the higher-ups just kind of swept it under the carpet and told me to shut up. You think that shit happens? Uh... Come on, man. That happens anywhere, man. That's gangs anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to associate my, my, with someone that told on me. And you're a white dude, it. man. There ain't many white yeah, dudes and rocking like, it, so. And I'm just like, man, like. You feel like that had anything I, I to do me. with it? I'm like, I did me and I was solid. That's all I can say, you know? Yeah. That's crazy, man. Uh, was there anything else that you disliked about the gang life? Um. Like, like I said, man, there's just a lot of jealousy. Like a lot of people hating on me just because I lived with him and like I learned like certain things that they weren't able to learn because only certain people can teach them. And like, I just got hated on bro because I'm white and I knew more like, but here's the thing though. If you go to prison and you're a man, bro, before anything, and you're not a sheep, like if you tell them like you, nah, I, you ain't sending me on that dummy mission. Like, you can go and hit this dude up over here. Like, I'm not that dude. Like, they like that, you know? They're like, all right, this dude ain't a sheep. Like, and they give you respect for that, you know? So, well, what happened with you, man? What happened with you, uh, the gang stabbing? I mean, was your homeboy that taught you all this shit? Uh, was he around when this happened? Was he kind of someone that told you to go do it as well? 
Well, no. So I was supposed to. So here's the story, man. I was supposed to go to a visit, right? I'm all in my whites. I smell like polo black, looking all good, ready to go my visit. First time ever meeting this chick, you know, so oh, I'm all shit. excited. Yeah. Well, so we're on A and B day, right? Big block? They, we're on A and B day, right? No, I said, is it a big block? Yeah, it's a big block. Oh, I knew it! <laughs> it's a big block Chevy. <laughs> hey, about 200 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we love the uh, big yeah. black Chevy? Yeah, big black Chevy, about two hundred horsepower. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. His fourth man, his fourth. You know, but for me though, I've been locked up, so I don't even care, bro. Yeah, so, no one cares hey, when you're locked up, up, man. Hey, I ended up marrying her, bro. What you mean? Oh my. <laughs> Hey, we ain't together like, anymore, bro. Are we you serious, bro? You even to God, bro. You hey, ended up marrying right here on my face. I oh my up. God, you fell in love with the jank doll. Yeah, man, she was racking me up, dog. Oh, hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. No kids. I was Matt, Max balling. Yeah, she had kids, two kids, but man. Oh, she had two kids. Oh, okay, I bro, thought we used to spend we used to spend eight hundred <laughs> on the phone, man, a month. Oh, she had money. Money, money. Yeah, that, I, I don't know. Well, she wasn't rich like that. I don't know what she's doing on the side, but she was supplying me, dog. So keeping me fed. Hey, damn right, tattoo on the forehead. Yeah. Name Jack. He supplied. That's what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So, uh, I don't even know where we were at, man. We were at before Big Block. Where were we at, man? All right. Oh, no, oh you were meeting I, a girl right, for the so first time. Meeting girl first. Yeah, time. I was meeting her for the first time. I was chilling, doing my thing. And uh, all of a sudden, they let this dude into the section that was supposed to be on an A day. He was a rival. And they just pop our doors. All of a sudden, he comes walking in, and the door shuts behind him. And I look down at him, and I already know what he is just by looking at him, you know? And so I first thing I hear is I hear this, this crip hit him up. He's like, what's up, man? Where are you from? And he throws his hood up, and he's like, this is where I'm from. And it just went down, bro. Like, that dude was just – I don't know if he was on a suicide mission or – but then it, it turns to find out, though, he wasn't even really from that hood. He was just, like, portraying that because he thought that the cops put him in a section where that's where they're from. So he was just trying to, like, fit in. So he was and fresh he, into prison? Yeah, no, no. So he came from another section. But you know how you got those crazy dudes that try to act like they're from hoods and stuff? And you know, they, you just got those weirdos in prison. Yeah. I call them six flags because they tried to have been from, like, six different hoods. Yeah. And so he ended up in the section, and he thought that's where, like, all the, you know, that certain group was. And he got there, and it was the other group, and he didn't know. So he just started saying some shit and ended up getting waxed, bro. Okay. It was bad, man. And this was, this was, uh, I mean, what was this about? Where where were we going into this? Well, I was going to a visit. Yeah, like, visit. Yeah. Where, how did the yeah. visit fit into this? I was trying to figure out where the hell. No, no, no. I was on my way to a visit. And they just, like, before they called me to my visit, they just happened to bring this dude in the cell. And you know how Your it is cell. on site. Yeah, no, he, they just, not the cell, the section. They just happened to bring him in the section. And okay. we're in general pop. Yeah. We're in general pop at this time. Uh-huh. So we're like, what the hell? Who's this dude? And it's on site. Like, as soon, like if you get a chance, that's what it is, bro. And he threw up his hood and that's about as much as he said before he got waxed, bro. Okay. And we stuck him up. Oh, so you were a part of the, uh, yeah, man. Oh, I just okay. happened to have a knife on me and I was standing there. I was the first one to get him, bro. Oh, but so you shanked that's, him up that's what they times, teach you. Huh? Yeah. That's what they teach you. Like, where'd you hit him at? on site, bro. Right in his neck, bro. Why you go for his neck? Man, that's the spot, bro. You crazy, man. You went straight for the neck, huh? They teach you the neck or the face. Yeah, I probably would have went for a cheek or something. Nah, man. I was trying to kill that dude. Yeah, see, now, why are you trying to kill him for, though? I don't know. I was trying to prove a point, bro. I was at a different point in my life. Like, you were at, uh, don't give two shits about you ain't got shit going for you type of shit? Yeah, because, like, my dad, like... My dad wasn't there for me. My mom, like, my mom wasn't writing me. Like, no one was messing with me. I felt alone. I was like, whatever, dog. Like, if you guys just want to leave me like this while I'm in prison, then I'm just going to become someone that you guys don't even want to talk to. Yeah. You know, and I just, that's the life I, I chose. So dude lived? Well, tell me, how the hell you get him in the net? Because that's close quarters, man. All you right, know? so 
I hit him with a box knife, bro. Right? And when I hit him, I hit him from here to here and it filleted his whole neck open, right? And my homie hit him on the top of his head and sliced him down like to his nose. But my, my friend, he's crazy, bro. He like he's not my homie anymore, but he just started like hitting him with elbows in the head, bro, and his head like split open. Right. And so I jumped up because he looked like he was dead. And I jumped up and I just started stomping him in the stomach and he shit himself. And then the cops came in, bro, and just started shooting us mace balls, everything. They started messing us up, threw us in our cell. He survived. Yeah, he ended up surviving. Classic but he surgery. flatlined. They, 20, no, he flat. No, no, way more than that. But he flatlined, but they ended up bringing him back, man. But you ended up having to pay twenty thousand dollars in bills for that. Oh no! This is no. This, that was the first incident. This oh, that was the eye socket. Oh shit! I forgot about yeah. the eye socket. Yeah. Damn, bro. So what was the charge of that they gave you? It was uh. And he ain't got it. Did he it press was, charges or was it the state? I don't know it how was it the works. State. So I caught. So long story short, that dude that I was telling you that told on me, he had some knives and he threw them on the tier. And the, I flushed mine, and he got me clipped with his knives. And then he told the cops that they weren't his and that all he has to do is check the cameras and they'll see who it really was. You know what I mean? And so I was like, what? Like, are you serious, man? And I was like, this is crazy. So I end up going to max on this, and I catch a five to life, which is an aggravated assault by a, a prisoner and with a gang enhancement and a weapon enhancement. Oh, so they have gang enhancements out there as well. Yeah, they have gang enhancement, weapon enhancements. Okay. So I got caught with a knife. It was gang related and it was a stabbing. So it was all three. Like five to life. That's crazy ass story, man. Um, and check this out. I was scheduled to get out seventy six days when I found yeah, out I caught. So that didn't have nothing. You didn't have that thought in your head at all. Going at his not neck. Not at all, bro. Not at all. No, not at all. All right, this is where it gets crazy. So prior to me catching this, okay, two weeks prior, this dude just got killed. And you actually made a video on it, right? Oh, I did? Yeah, you made a video on it, the dude that got killed in Utah, right? I can't remember. And I've done so many videos. I actually watched that happen. I watched him die, bro. So two weeks later, now I'm catching a, almost a murder, and I'm just like, damn, there's two bodies in two weeks. Oh, so you ain't been out too long. No, I've been out two years now. Okay, fresh out. But I'm, that, I'm, I'm, getting fresh off, out. I'm getting off. I should be getting off parole this month. That's good, man. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll talk more about that in part two because I want to talk more about prison life in Utah and uh, all that good stuff. We got the bulk of things out the way, ladies and gentlemen. As you heard him say, he left that behind. Uh, you got a YouTube channel. You probably speak a lot about that over there. Uh, yeah. Where can people find you, man? Until part two. Man, first and foremost, they can find me on TikTok. I got a, I got a pretty good following, man. Were you doing I it in prison? Man, I, yeah, I got. Oh no! No, 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 I wasn't doing it in prison, but I do prison TikToks. I got ninety-eight thousand followers on TikTok. Wait, what do you mean? If you guys, you if you guys look me up, it's Burner Four Twenty is my TikTok. But you can find me on YouTube. My channel's called The Dropout. Okay. Uh, on YouTube, Dropout. Yeah. Okay, yep. okay. And on TikTok, what is it? What do you do on there? You say nah, you didn't made... do it in prison, but you do prison TikTok. What do you mean? All right, so I got out. I made a TikTok just like talking about prison, and it blew up, and it hit 2 million views, right? Yeah. And so I was like, what? And overnight, I gained like 100,000 subscriber following, bro. Shit, you getting paid from it yet? Uh, I, I've made, I made some money off of it. Ah! I need to become a TikTok dog. Hey, I'm trying. I'm trying to get this YouTube up, though, man. Dropout, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even TikTok. I don't know how to do TikToks. I haven't even. You know, I didn't even know there was a market hey, for that Dad, shit. I'm telling you right now, if you got on TikTok, bro, you blow the hell up. You dog. think so, I, man? I, I, yeah, absolutely. What's bro. your number one you, clip about? Uh, my number one is about. Uh, I was actually talking about a. Uh, about six nine, bro. About him telling. Oh shit! That's all. Like, hey, that's how we all get our start, saying it. <laughs> hey, it's that clickbait play. Hey, I gotta do what I gotta do, dog. 
<laughs> all right, man. All right. Uh, uh. all right, ladies and gentlemen. Look, I'm gonna leave everything pinned. I'm. A, I can't wait for part two, man. I appreciate you coming on the show. I enjoyed this. Absolutely, brother, man. I appreciate uh, you having me. I'm glad to see you out doing doing what's you know everything you need to get done. You're about to get off parole. Uh, I'll keep everything linked and pinned in the description of the video for people to check out uh, his content if you want to follow him up. Uh. But I appreciate you coming on once again, man. You got anything you want to say before we leave? <laughs> Not much, man. Just uh, I have a kid in two days, so uh, pray for me, man. Safe delivery and uh, much love, dog. Boy or girl? Boy or girl? It's a girl, man. Her name's going to be Emerald Jade. First one? First kid. That's a good name. It's a good name. I got four girls, man. I'm telling you, you're going to love it, man. It ain't nothing like yeah, a I'm daughter. I'm going to love it, man. You know? You know? Two days, man. All right, bro. You be easy out there. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Until the next time we meet. All right, man. Be Absolutely, easy. Absolutely, man.